All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're on to our third match of this afternoon's session, featuring two players from England. First of all, a man who knocked out one of the Gibraltarian players yesterday, Justin Broton. He has been around for over 20 years. Ladies and gentlemen, he is Superman Matt Clark. His opponent, a former world championship runner-up. He is the 2016 German darts champion. Ladies and gentlemen, ranked number 18 in the world, seeded number nine, Alan Chuck Norris. And your referee for the next two matches, Mr. George Noble. Well, two seeded players through in the opening couple of games of the day here at the Gibraltar Darts Trophy. Christo Reyes and Daryl Gurney booking their place in the final day of action here at the Victoria Stadium. Now, we've got a former Euro Tour winner in Alan Chuck Norris taking on Matt Clark, Superman. Now, if the original Chuck Norris and Superman did battle, I don't know who'd win. I know Superman has superpowers. He's an alien with incredible, you know, he can see through things and fly faster than a speeding bullet. Far too over-reliant on kryptonite, though. Well, um, that's the danger. For my money. Plus, Chuck Norris celebrates his birthday every year by throwing a child into the sun. So he has quite, quite the power. And it is very difficult to predict who's going to win this. Obviously, Norris would be the favourite. But Matt Clark has been playing some decent stuff of late. And in his opening round, I know he only averaged 85 against the Gibraltarian Justin Broton. But that plunged towards the end of the game when he missed loads of doubles in the closing stages. And it would have been in the mid-90s for most of that match. If he can produce that kind of thing, if you can catch Alan Norris Cole before he builds up a bit of momentum in a tournament, he is susceptible to an early exit. And we've seen that in a few of the tournaments over the course of the year. I'm Dan Dawson. Rob Malarkey joins me in commentary for Chuck Norris versus Superman for a place in the third round or last 16 of the Gibraltar Darts Trophy. Yeah, and just to add to what you were saying there, Dan, Norris maybe feeling a little bit more pressure than most here this weekend. We alluded to it earlier as well, the new rule brought in by the PDC this year, stating that if a seeded player loses his first game in a Euro Tour event, then the prize money earned will not go towards either the Order of Merit or indeed the European Tour Order of Merit. And the trouble with Norris is he's suffered three successive second round defeats on the European stage in Jena, in Zabrupen and in Sindelfingen as well. So he's towards the lower end of the European Tour Order of Merit in terms of the top 32. But he 96. is a curious player, Alan, in that you just look over the course of this year and he'll have a great day and follow it up with a poor day, mm. or vice versa. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, away from Europe, I think it's been a fairly productive 2017 for him. Well, yeah, I mean, th that's the thing. He's, he's always a threat in whatever tournament he goes into, but sometimes it's just not there. And if he doesn't get through his own game, then that's it. I mean, for example, the last Pro Tour weekend in Wigan went out first round on the Saturday, quarter final on the Sunday. He made a semi final in Milton Keynes on the Saturday, second round on the Sunday. <laughs> It's, it's just consistently like that. You know, Semi-final of the UK Open, and then the following Pro Tour weekend, he had two first-round exits. It's just very difficult to predict what kind of Alan Norris is going to turn up. You know, you know how he's going to play. Mm. I mean, he'll just bulldoze his way through a game. Finesse is not a word you're going to use in association with Alan Norris, unless it is prefixed by he doesn't possess a great deal of. But it doesn't matter, because we like clashes of styles. That's what we like. 140. And you He's heard this. Do you, if you want finesse, let's have a 170 check out to start things off. No. Couldn't quite finesse that into the treble 20. No. He started a, with a 170 in the Gurney 97. game. 97. Match you record 120. It'd be a bit much to ask for a 170 in the opening leg for two games running. 124 would be good, though. And it's on. Oh, double 11. Oh, oh what a start. The first leg. Clark. Second leg match to Roper. Game on. Well, we had a 130 check out in the opening leg of the Reyes Richardson match. A 124 check out from Matt Clark. A break of throw and already something to think about here for the number nine seed, Alan Norris, the man who won the first Players oh, Championship events of the year. It was his third PDC ranking title. Yeah, adding to the last European Tour event of last year. 
German Darts Championship. 60. His first title on UK soil, the other one coming in Dublin as well. So, another box ticked. Win here, does that count as a win on UK soil? Yes, it would be. It would it's be. a British overseas territory, so I would say yes. Nice point of order raised there by Dan Dawson. Wow. These things do need addressing. Yeah, for somebody. 60. But yeah, also something that needs addressing is Norris's run of form in Europe. I mentioned those three successive second round defeats. He kicked off the campaign in Hildesheim with a third round defeat to Kim Hybrix, where he was the defending champion. Lost in the third 60. round there in the German Darts Championship. Then beaten by Barney in the second round in Jena. Second round defeat by Vandenberg in Saarbrücken. And then last weekend, Jan Decker 140. did the business in round two in the European Darts Grand Prix. Having said that, you look at the players there. And the, the only one... Dimitri is obviously an up-and-coming young player, but he's playing some very good darts at the minute and tearing up the development tour. Jan Decker was a surprise, but then again, look how well Jan Decker played. 140! Started off at 108 average in the first round and then barely missed a dart at double for the entire weekend. Very difficult to beat a man like that. 140! 140 for Norris. Gets That's him back Aguirre in this 76. leg. Matt Clark's got a real chance to double his lead here to 2-0. Tops them. 36. Alan, you require 101. So a route back in here potentially for Alan Norris to break back straight away. Well, 98 remaining now. Scratchy stuff. 33. A little bit messy. 40. Really understand that. I mean, I know he's gone treble one to leave 98. Surely treble 20 for double 19 is better than treble 16 for bullseye. But... Rod Harrington would have a field day with that. In short, in the second leg, if he was Matt here. Clark. It does not matter. Matt Clark. Good leg, Allen to throw first. 2 0. Game on. And playing like the man who reached the quarterfinals of the World Match Play nine years ago. Early days, I know, but he is averaging 103.6, Matt Clark. 140. Not bad. For the 49 year old. Not bad at all. Made his European Tour debut in 2013 in the European Darts Open. Lost in the first round to Phil Taylor that year. Or that day. 60. Yeah, tough draw. And also lost his debut appearance in Gibraltar as well. 6-4 to big John Henderson. That was three years ago. His first Euro win came later that same year in the European Darts Grand Prix. 60. Beating John Henderson in their rematch. 6-5. Uh, three years ago, that was when this title was won by James Wade, the machine. He's the only former champion in the field this weekend with Michael Van Gogh in the winner for the last two years, sitting this one out. And Phil Taylor, of course, not playing the Euro Tour stuff or not seemingly giving any indication that he will over the course of this year. James Wade in action later on this evening, taking on Dimitri van den Berg. 58. In fact... <laughs> Clark's most recent European Tour appearance was in Risa in June of 2015, where he beat John Henderson again. So they've met three times before, those two. John Henderson's still here this weekend as well. He faces Ian White later. Maybe Henderson and Clark will renew battle once 95. more here in Gibraltar for a fourth time on the Euro Tour. They know each other very well indeed. John Henderson has spent most of this weekend, when I've seen him, in, in full football kit. I mean, he's not got shin pads and boots, but he's got, you know, it's shirt and shorts. Yeah. It's a, you know, Proper Brits abroad. It's enough. Yeah. Or not abroad, because we're on UK territory. Oh, never mind. Oh, you get the idea. Fifty-eight. Just the one meeting between these two in the past. That was won by Alan Norris, six-four in a Players' Championship event back in 2015. So it's been a long while since they've locked horns. 112. Straying into the four there. Leaves him 74. Got options there, Alan Norris. He could look at treble 18 or treble 14. I meant to say that meeting in Risa with Henderson was his most recent tour appearance prior to last weekend, of course. Yes. 140. And then you require 74. Norris then to level things up looking at double 10.
sorry, not to level things up, to get a leg on the board here, sorry, to reduce 64. the arrears to 2-1, but he misses it Andrew anyway. Boyer, 48. And uh, Matt Clark is back in the money once more here for another potential break of throw. Well, he's two out of four on his double so far, and he's going to get two darts at a double. So the stats say it's going to go second dart. The stats Eight. are wrong. The stats are wrong. Alan, you require ten. So Norris, just to give him something to build upon. We said if you catch him cold, he can be susceptible to an early exit in tournaments, and he's looking pretty cold at the moment. Madhouse. Yeah, well, we chatted to uh, Alan Norris right earlier. He's had a bit of a Keep mishap on. this morning, slightly inconvenienced at the hotel. He had to change rooms, I believe, or at least he had to vacate his room. Luckily, it was breakfast time anyway, so he was on his way downstairs. Nevertheless, uh, just a minor flood 60. on the fourth floor. Not saying it was totally related to Norris's, Norris's room or indeed Norris's nocturnal activity <laughs> in any way at all. I'm not sure there's any suggestion that Alan Norris has flooded the hotel. <laughs> but uh, anyway, he was uh, not too happy about the situation. Don't know whether he's been upgraded or not, but uh, the only room left available was the penthouse suite on the top floor. 57. Wish I'd not gone down that route now. Well, right, don't worry about it. Let me see. So Norris, 83. on this occasion, sticking one in the treble one and then staying on the treble 20 and hitting it. Maybe you should have had a look at that earlier on when he was going treble 16 for ball. Inconvenience by the waiter as well. Norris, multilingual, as we uh, mentioned yesterday in commentary. He's a real polyglot. He's got, I don't know how many languages he speaks, but it's... Well, anyway, here we are. He ordered a cafe con leche, which even I understand, and uh, the waiter was... Sorry, I don't speak Spanish. Here we are. It is on British, on it, British soil. It is Spanish with a, a West Country twang. Fell on deaf ears. The plea for coffee from Norris. That was his other mishap this morning. 42. Well, to be honest, at least he's got here in plenty of time and got his preparation right because last weekend he thought he was playing first game of the <laughs> evening session. He was actually first game of the afternoon session. So he raced down, got here about, got to the venue about an hour before he was due on stage, which does not give Alan 74. the necessary time to go through his rigorous pre-match training scheme. Is there a cut-off point for arrivals, like a, I think, uh, you know a deadline they have to adhere to? I, I think 100. it might be five minutes uh, you oh, right, one, before they do on, I'm not sure. Well, 21 off, leaves 83, so trouble 17 for double 16. Matt Clark back on 142. Real opportunity to break the throw. Even if Norris doesn't take this out, he just wants to leave himself three darts at a double when he comes back to the board. Well, he's not quite managed that, but he's going to get a couple of darts for the leg, assuming Clark doesn't take this out. Now, what route does he go? Some players will go two treble 17s for tops here, but he looks like he's looking at the top of the board. That is not the route he wants. 81. I'll only require 56. Well, this is more conventional, but still Norris not really too convincing at this moment in time. And 16. there's another illustration of that. As you require 61. Not taking the opportunities when they come at the moment. Alan Norris on the Clark throw. Too good. One dart, double four. 57. Yeah, punish there. With that first dart, 40. in many respects. Well, Clark won the first two legs. He had a couple of darts in the third. He's had one in this leg. He will be feeling, I could be 4-0 up here. But... Oh, it's not 2-2. Two, two. As you require, 4. Norris looks angry. And... Uh, very understandable as to why that is the case, especially if Clark takes out double two. Now, does he go to the left or does he go right down the middle? Two. Well, he went over the top in the end by the looks of things, and he's in the madhouse. Well, Norris you took out ten. ten on double one in the last leg. 
But and he doesn't mess around this time and Alan hits double Norris. five. And we do have a level game here. It's not been pretty. Reflect Allen to throw first. Game but on. Norris will be looking at the scoreboard and thinking, yep, yeah, I'll take that right now. Oh, certainly. I mean, when you survive four darts for a 3 1 deficit and the one leg you'd won prior to that, you'd survived a couple of darts as well. 100. You'll be thinking Christmas has come early. Fantastic stuff Matt Clark. Still waiting for a first maximum in this game, but the 177 to kick off from Superman. 100. Hit three 180s against Justin Broton, the Gibraltarian, who, to be fair, was probably the top performer out of the host nation qualifiers yesterday. Oh, my. 125. Five perfect darts from Matt Clark. The sixth one goes missing. He doesn't like that either. Alan Norris has thrown his fair share of nine darters since he joined the PDC circuit as well. But he won't be too bothered about nine darters right now. He just wants to find any source of trouble 44. just to uh, revive this particular visit. He'll be happy with a 15 darter in this leg, but not plenty of work to do if he's going to pull one off. And he is, well, he's going to have to rely on Matt Clark. Not taking out in... 12. 133. 97. Match requires 66. That leaves the 160, but Clark, 94 points better off and looking good to get a break. He's only going to get the one dart at tops. 46. Pulls it a little low. And, you and a day where we've already seen a number. Of ton plus checkout. Can Alan Norris produce one here to go into the lead for the first time? Bearing in mind the only thing he's managed to check out so far is 10. 160 was always going to be a tall order. 100. Match required 20. 20. Well, potential 13 dart break of throw here for Matt Clark. 14 or 15 will do. And it is 15 it's darts that he needs Matt for Clark. the. Break of throw to re-establish his lead. Clark in front once again. Just a little bit of dialogue going on at the back of the stage. Norris looks distracted by something in the crowd. I think George Noble's coming over to have a look at this. Well, this is the issue with a crowd of this size. It just means that you can hear individual voices a lot more easily. I mean, yesterday... Six leg Matt to throw first. Game on. Yesterday, I think the players could... Basically, just earwig on somebody's conversation. That's what I mean. Front row. 140. Kurt Bevins, the referee, was saying that um, it's a lot warmer on stage today than it was yesterday. I'm just wondering if that's uh, the problem as well. It is a factor for Alan Norris, particularly. I mean, he's a guy who does. He, you saw him earlier on, actually. He walked up to the board, retrieved his darts, and actually wiped his hands down the stage. I'm not really sure that's good darts etiquette, to be <laughs> honest, but it's. You know, it is something that he does just to try and remove any excess sweat and moisture off his fingers. He always takes two sets of darts up there. So he's actually got another set of darts, exactly the same as the ones he's got in his hand, just over on the table. And he'll switch between them mm. in the middle of the game, just so that he can 60. try and maintain a level of grip on those barrels. Might we also stress that Norris's perspiration was not the reason for the flood on the fourth floor as well? <laughs> I mean, look, there's sweat. I mean, if you're going to flood an entire floor of a yacht just because it's a bit warm, I, you need to see a doctor. Well, well that go. is what the doctor ordered for Alan Norris. That's been a long time coming. Clark on a bogey number, can't take out the 165. Norris. 135. Well, you know what? And then you call 161. That leaves Clark at double 15. Norris won't take out the 161. Clark has got options here. He could go straight at it. He could look to split 91. it. 91. Match requires 30. Yeah, Norris is ready to pounce on 70 just in case. So Clark has to, uh, well, he's gone straight for double 15. He's not too far away with those two, but he's just steps to the uh, left-hand side here to try and exploit that gap, 15. and he's come inside, and that is agonising. And he requires up. 70. 
Come on, Norris. Starting in the 18s or treble 10? Which is it to do? Well, he's hit 45 accidentally. 25 left. Double 12. And he pins it. 70 checkout. We do have a level game once more. Alan Norris breaking back. But every single leg that Alan Norris has won, Matt Clark has also had darts to win it. Not necessarily before Alan Norris. But he missed two darts in the third leg, four darts in the fourth, and then three darts there. So Matt Clark, there'll be, there'll be a little voice in the back of his head saying, you could have won this 6-0. This could be done and dusted. You could be in the final day of action. 43. Gerwin Price or Darren Johnson awaiting the winner of this one, by the way. They meet in the first match of the evening session from 7 o'clock local time. 58. But as to who they will face, or as to uh, who will go through to that meeting tomorrow with Price or Johnson, is very much up in the air here. 140. Well, I mean, Norris would have walked on stage, and I'm sure he'd have been telling himself, get this done quickly, get through this awkward first game, as I failed to do in the last three Euro tours. 100. And then get back and watch me beloved Man City take on Leicester. But the way this is going, well, there won't be long left in that game, because this could go all the way. 180. Yeah, George is just um, casting an eye over his shoulder at the crowd again here. Eighty-seven. Oh, Norris glanced again over his shoulder, this time on the opposite side. May not be ideal, but unfortunately, it may just be something these guys are going to have to live with. Once again, Matt Clark has left himself a bogey number, and that could prove to be a major mistake, because Norris, he sets this up. 100. Well, he has to an extent. 115 only needs one treble for a dart at the double for the leg. And if Matt Clark sees the first two go in the treble 20, well, you won't see Matt Clark's uber disgusted face. 97. Alan, you require 115. Well, Clark is in good shape here for another break of throw. Norris, you feel, needs this. Oh. Double 10. Double five. 110. Double five. Double, double five, sorry. 62. I was going to say double five, then the camera moved, and I was perplexed. Well, double 16. Anyway, we know that. Double eight now. And there it is. And and yet another break. It's four Matt consecutive Clark. breaks of throw we've had here. And Matt Clark just maintaining that he narrow advantage. Throw first. Game on. Forty-three. Yeah, not the first time he's thrown forty-three today, Matt Clark. Neither player just able to string together a one hundred and a significantly consistent run here. Now, what? Well, look, Alan Norris when he's at his big, bolshy, bouncing best, a big scorer. You know, ton forties, ton eighties. He can throw that sort of stuff and keep it going. You know, throwing those 100 averages, but he's you know, 15 points off the 100 average right now. He's at 1180, six scores of 140 or more, which in seven and a half legs, 100. it's not what you expect from Alan Norris. You know, Alan Norris didn't win the German Darts Championship at the back end of this year, uh, last year, sorry, by playing at this standard. But then again, you know, he played a heck of a lot better when he won the first Players' Championship title this year, and he's played better when he's gone on these various runs. But it has it's very hit and miss with Alan, and right now, all he wants is to just try and find a way to win this scrappily, and then come back tomorrow, and if he does hit top gear, then he's got a chance of going all the way and winning the thing. But right now, it is proving very, very difficult to shake off Matt Clark. Both guys have missed... Quite a number of darts at double. And if anything, Matt Clark has missed some 
even more important one. Ninety-seven. Norris has already hit double twelve once in this game. If he can pin it when he returns to the board, it'll be four apiece. And it is very much anybody's pressure. That is a terrific visit from Matt Clark. Just giving Norris one or two reminders here. This is a significant visit here for Alan Norris. If he finds himself five three down, it could be. A problem, but Adam he Norris. finds double 12, and we are level once again at no four flag, apiece. Alan to throw first. Game on. Very little separating them, not only in the scoreline, but also in the averages as well. Pretty similar stats on the uh, checkouts as well. There we see the averages, 86.4, plays 87.56, and that'll do Norris's average, the world of good. Well, we saw last night in the... Best display of the tournament so far from the bronze, the Donis, Steve B. 140. When it came to the crunch, he started to up his level. He managed to beat Mike Dedeka, hit four 180s in four consecutive legs, and came from 150 four down to win it. Now, Alan Norris, that 180 there, is this him just stepping it up? Is he feel a bit more comfortable? Is he found his range? Is he perhaps not focused on the crowd so much? Well, if he is, he's doing it at exactly the right time. 92. He has not led at any point in this match, Alan Norris, but he should get to a double first. 42. Alan, you record 114. And he'll almost certainly get to a double first here, although if you keep throwing it in the treble one, that won't help. Better. 74. Yeah, that will do nicely for Alan Norris. Leaves himself tops to take a 5-4 lead, having trailed 2-0, having had to survive darts in the first three legs of this game that Alan Norris won. He could have already lost this game and 44. lost it by a big mark. Alan, you require 40. But Matt Clark has just faded a little bit as this game has gone on at crucial times and it has allowed Norris to bully him a bit in this leg and there it is the number nine seed into the lead for the first Alan time Norris. and a leg Seven away and how often reverse. is that ninth leg game on. a pivotal one in these best of 11 matches well if he does come through this Alan Norris he will uh, know that he's come through a real battle in his uh, opening encounter against Matt Clark 140 Certainly doing it the hard way, Alan Norris could so easily have found himself 4-0 down. Still work to do, though. Well, this will be frustrating for Matt Clark. I mean, he knows as, a, as an unseeded player, you come to these Euro Tour events, you win your first game, and you can get some horrible draws in the first round. So win your first game, you're going to go up against one of the seeds, one of the form players in darts. It's never going to be easy. Last time out in Sindelfing, and he ran into Dave Chisnell, who was unplayable. He averaged 112. There's not a great deal you can do. And Clark stuck with him in the early part mm. of the match. But there's not a great deal you can do against that. Today, he's come up against a seeded player having won his first round game. And Alan Norris has not played 140. well. But he is on the brink of defeat. This, however, could be the best leg of the match. Three consecutive 140s for Matt Clark. And 81 100. remain to take us to an 11th and deciding leg. Well, the way he's played and the way the match has panned out, I think Clark deserves at least a crack at a deciding leg here anyway. Norris will be throwing first if we do go to an 11th. Be and sure we are on course Matt for Clark. an 11th leg. And, yeah, I think a match of this nature warrants leg, Alan, two, an 11th first. and final leg. Game on. Can Norris fly out of the traps here? Well, there have been more breaks of throw than holds in this game, so just throwing first has not necessarily meant that 100. you're going to go and win the leg. In fact, it's been more likely that you lose it. And given the manner of the finishing we've seen today as well, that is what it could well boil down to in the end. Yeah, it would not surprise you if both of these guys got matched arts in yeah. this leg. 40. Although that Although, yeah. hurts. Now Norris needs to just really... Seize on that. 
One more will do. And one oh, more he gets. And it's advantage Norris now. 200 points behind. In the deciding leg. Matt Clark needs something superhuman. 59. And that is anything but. Yeah, I could do with some of that kryptonite we talked about earlier. Because he's adrift here. And Norris will recover as well. After that five. And it's Norris who is down to a finish first. He's got a very healthy cushion here. Clark is struggling to keep pace. 100. That's not enough. 136. So six starts at least here for Norris. He's left. Mm. Oh, he's left himself 119, so I think he's going to have to come down from the 19s. 74. Well, he's chipping away at it, and he leaves himself 62. 62. He's taken out 70, he's taken out tops, but I mean, he's not been stunning on the doubles, Alan Norris. He's, only, he's, he's hitting Alan fewer than a third of his darts at double. He is going to get loads of darts for the match, though. Double 10. Mm, double 5 again for Norris. He won't want to be messing around too much longer here. A big visit from Clark might put a different gloss on things, and it could be the biggest visit of the lot. 140. 140. Now then. Only required 10. Norris can't afford to come inside on this one. One more go at uh, this particular visit, and it's just about enough for Alan Norris, Norris to crawl over the finishing line in what has been a very, very hard-fought encounter for him to get his campaign up here in Gibraltar. Relief for Norris in that at long last he's managed to get through to the third round of a European Tour event after three successive second round exits on the European stage. Matt Clark will certainly reflect on those opportunities. Missed darts for a 3-0 lead, missed four darts for a 3-1 lead and also missed darts at double 15 in the uh, sixth leg as well. Plenty of opportunities gone by, plenty to reflect upon as far as he's concerned but it's Norris who goes through to face either Gerwin Price or Darren Johnson in the last 16 tomorrow. Well, I, I, I gotta say, there was a bit of a struggle, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a bit of a scrappy game. I think uh, the baby spat the dummy. Um, I've, I've, I think it was a, f a few more on Matt's doubles than mine, but yeah, you know, tough struggle. You know, both of us, you know, we tried our best, but you know, it wasn't happening. Uh, so far this year on the Euro Tour circuit, You've struggled in the first round. You haven't won a first round match yet until now. It, does that also come into effect in this match? Well, I think you need to look at the statistics because I won the first one. I lost the last three. But, uh, but the same plan of attack last year, you know, win the first one, lose four on the trot, then go and win the Pro Tour and the European Tour. So we'll be all right. We're on track. All right, ladies and gentlemen, he is on track. He's on schedule. He's into the next round. Alan Norris.